Hello and welcome to a new video about virtual reality. This time we are going to talk about, uh, you know, used hardware and also software perspective. Uh, last time we talked about what are what is necessary. Now we are going to talk about how. Uh, well, the key to a good virtual reality is a three-dimensional picture. Okay, to keep it three-dimensional, to have it appear three-dimensional for our brain, yeah, we need to have stereoscopic view. You know? We have two eyes. One is picturing the scenery of a slightly different angle than the other one. Yeah? And this is how our, our brain computes its 3D effect, that we can estimate how far an object is apart. Working usually pretty well, so we have to adapt here a little bit. Yeah? There are several possibilities. Yeah? One possibility is to wear a headset. Yeah? So we can wear a headset. With two, with two screens built in. Yeah? So I have one screen for my left eye, I have one screen for my right eye. And both screens show slightly different pictures, so in my brain there is generated a three-dimensional image, huh? looking three-dimensional for me. Headset with two screens. You know, there are a bunch of, of things out there. Yeah? There's this Oculus Rift, there is the Hive, uh, HTC Hive, and a lot of other things. Yeah? There are even cardboard things where you can put your, your, your smartphone inside, and then uh, this is working better or not that that good you know i don't want to give any 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 suggestions yeah because i simply don't know how this is going to be developed or or i have not the market overview to be an expert in this yeah? however this is one possibility to have a headset with two screens i can wear them yeah this headset has to track somehow my movement of my head. It is also different te technologies. Some do it with, with built-in sensors. Some do have a reference point and, and track the movement of the reference point. So they know how different possibilities huh? it is necessary. And depending on the movement of my head, the pictures in those two screens, they have to adapt. Huh? One possibility, headset with two screens. Second possibility is a huge wall, a projection wall. This might be just, just a wall uh, where it is projected on a large scale uh, so that I can stand in front of this wall and watch and see have my whole view surrounded by by, by, by the projection yeah? to, to feel I'm inside. Yeah? Or there might also be things like the cave, for instance. The cave is basically projections on different sides. Yeah? So you can step into the cave yeah? and you can see pictures from every side. So also your whole field of view is projected yeah? or a lot of parts of your field of view are projected. However, if you have something like this, a projection wall, you also want to have this impression that this is a three-dimensional. Yeah? You don't want to have the impression this is just generated from me. Yeah? You want to have the impression that this looks three-dimensional. Yeah? So you also have to wear some, some glasses. And glasses. You know this from, from the cinemas probably. Uh, 3D cinemas, you have to wear the, the glasses, three, 3D glasses, uh, and then you see it in three dimensions. Uh, it's working exactly the same way. There might be active glasses, shutter glasses, where, you, where they just open one eye after the other. <laughs> How does it look? <laughs> three dimensional, huh? 
open one eye after the other with a certain shutters yeah and the actual projection wall is displaying the picture of a one eye then the other eye is changed and the picture is changed this is in synchronous and so it looks for one eye i have one picture for the other i have another picture it looks three-dimensional another possibility is what is often used in cinemas is to have a passive technology yeah, so that there are polarized light or something like this that my left eye only sees the light which is produced from a left eye and my right eye only sees the light which is produced from a right eye. And the technology is to separate those. However, if I don't wear the goggles there, I do see in both cases, I do see ghost pictures. Yeah? It looks blurry and so on because I simply see both, uh, both uh, pictures at the same time. And if I then switch to the goggles again, book. They are separated and I have a three-dimensional impression. So this is this is the picture. This is how we get the picture. Then we need to interact with the world. A world to look at is nice. A world which I can interact with, this gives me more of virtual reality. Just strolling through the park or simply grab something from the grass, yeah. pick up a flower, different things. So I need to have things where I can interact with the world. Yeah. So there are special uh, three-dimensional input devices. Yeah. There, are, there are pencils, 3D mice, and s which I can move. Yeah. There are levers and, and however I move this, I see it in my virtual reality a point where I track it. Yeah? So there are things with the lever, 3D mice and so on. And there are also fly sticks, yeah? which can, which are tracked contactless, so they know where it is and I can see it in my virtual reality, my position of a virtual tool or something like this, yeah? just by it's hovering. Yeah? You can walk around with this. Then there are even experiments with omnidirectional moving belts, conveyor belts, yeah, where I can walk. It shall feel like I'm walking. However, in real, I am a standstill. This is currently not working that well, yeah, but maybe this would be then a very good step. Yeah. So there are special input things for interacting with the virtual reality. So input devices like 3D mice, 3D mouse, I write singular, 3D mouse, then just the fly stick, something like this. Input devices. Then of course there's the software. This is, you know, the hardware, long time, I mean the, the, the basics are easy, right? However, you know, you have, to, you have to calculate quite a lot of stuff. There are three-dimensional elements which shall be calculated not only once but twice yeah, for my left eye and for my right eye. So I, it's not like a computer game where I'm using just for, for the screen one time. Yeah? This already doubles my effort. Yeah? And to prevent some simulation thickness or something like this, you know, if, if you are driving simulators and so on, you have to reach at least around 60 Hertz. So this means that the software needs to be able to calculate 120 pictures per second, frames per second. This was not that easy possible. In the 90s it was, then in the 2000s, yeah, in the 90s, it was really, really, really expensive. Yeah? In the 2000s, it was only expensive anymore. And meanwhile, we are pretty much there that we can use almost standard components. Yeah? A better PC is capable of doing virtual reality. Different grades, of course, yeah? different detail levels and so on. However, 
this, meanwhile, this is no longer an issue. The, the, the power, the calculation power. Um, the objects and so on, they are done with three-dimensional modeling uh, software like Maya or, or, I don't know, Blender or other 3D, 3D objects. Then the scenery, this is composed with special software, World Editor or something like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are quite some software packages included, included to compose a three-dimensional experience for us. Uh, virtual experience. It's not like you studying Word and describe something. You have to do a little bit more effort. Yeah. So, this is actually the hardware and the software part. With modeling software, you have composing software where you compose the world, enrich it with sounds and so on. Yeah. And the hardware, like I said, display hardware, input hardware, and then there is the computers and so on, which are oh, meanwhile pretty powerful. Yeah, that's virtual reality. Next time we are going to talk about where we use it, yeah? where, why, yeah? what are the field of applications. This then will be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.